Hello my beautiful friends, a very warm welcome to this video which is all about a little flow to help make your knees more resilient, strong and bulletproof. Now before we get into this I just want to reiterate that sometimes on the internet you hear people talking about how the knees are these vulnerable joints and nothing could be further from the truth. Your knees, even if they are hurting, are extremely resilient, strong joints and please remember this, just because your knee is the joint that's in pain doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong with your knees. Very often if someone has painful knees, it's actually because something's going on higher up or lower down than the knee itself. And that should inspire you. That should, when you're walking up the stairs, it should give you that thought process of my knees are okay. And you'll be surprised how much better that makes you feel instantly. Now, I understand that you are hurting though, and we do want to address that. So let's try a few things in today's class to see if it can make a difference. Now, I've got a bunch of different tools which you don't need to be able to do this class. The only tool that you definitely need to be able to do the class is this little stretchy band, the little skinny ones which you put around the leg and you we're gonna do little crab walks with those. However, if you have a longer stretchy band and not a shorter one, you can always fold these triple or double and that can kind of mimic the same action. So to begin, we are going to step up on a higher platform. And if you don't have a set of blocks like I do, what you could do is just head to a step anywhere where one foot is going to be elevated and the other one is going to be free. And we're going to place our hands on our hips and we're going to lower the lifted legs hip line and then lift it back up. What we're going to be doing is targeting a muscle called the gluteus medius. Now this is a stabilizer for the pelvis to make sure that it doesn't do this funny little hip dip, which is called a Trendelenburg. And we're on level four and already it's burning. <laughs> it speaks volumes about my glute mean state. Number five, we're aiming for 10. You can of course hold on if you want to hold on to something. The most important thing is that you feel this hip going down and up without your base legs knee bending in any way. Last one. Did you feel the power of the gluteus medius? Oh, I haven't done these in a long time. Okay, well thank you for joining me and doing these with me because it's definitely more fun when I'm with you. Remember that if you enjoy doing things like this with someone else, <laughs> please hit that subscribe button so you can get more of these epic flows that help to solve different things going on in your body. We're on number four, right? And you're feeling that control in the hip. Nice, smooth, relaxed breaths. Let the body move. Really let the belly expand. Good. The up is the most important part, so really drive up, 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 up with that hip. Last two coming up. <laughs> and last one. Awesome job, well done. We're gonna do this a couple more times. Right foot, left foot, left foot, right foot, whichever one you started with. Let's do the first side again. And let's get your hip to stabilize more appropriately so that your knees get that support that they need when they're out and about rocking it at life. Five to go. Three more. Two. My left one is definitely needing more love than the right one. I don't know if you guys have a stronger side too. Okay, my darling, are you ready for the other side? <laughs> Last one of these. And essentially what we're doing is mimicking what the hips would do if they were weak, but we're training all possible movement variations in your brain as to where your pelvis is and where it should be when you're walking so your knee doesn't compensate. Also, if you're not holding on, this is a super fun little balance challenge. <laughs> Let's do three more, two more, Wah. last one, amazing. Give yourself a little victory dance and a little mwah, mwah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna move on to our crab walks. Now this is where you need these stretchy little bands. Maybe you're doubling up your big uh, loopy band. 
slide in. If already your butt's burning, hit that like button, please. Let us know that you can feel it. We're gonna start doing crab walks. Now, this stretchy band for me is maybe not as strong as I'd like it, so I'm gonna move it down lower to my ankles. However, if it feels too strong for you, you can always move it up higher towards your pelvis. So walking side to side, I'd like you to turn your feet out very slightly. Good. Three, four. One, two, three, four, and then again, four the other way. <laughs> Hello, but <laughs> Hello there, my friends. It's been a while. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else feels like I'm giving their butt a little pep talk. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's not that I haven't been working out, I have, but I haven't done this motion in a while, and boy, oh boy. Okay, last two, last one that way. And then we're gonna victory dance. Oh boy. That speaks volumes. How you doing? Booty okay? Let's change it slightly now. We're gonna move forwards, a bit like a zombie walk. Instead of just stepping forwards, you're slightly diagonally outwards stepping the foot. So that again, as you load on that single leg, you get the glute med firing, maintaining the position of your pelvis, which is then gonna translate when you're actually just walking. So let's take it again, back on the diagonal. Good. Really feeling the booty working super hard to maintain its shape. The knee having to work against that resistance as well. All the structures around the pelvis. Nice, hopefully you're feeling that and you can sort of understand the value of it. I like to even slightly turn my feet out to get even more booty activation. And another little hack is standing on one leg for longer whilst you're doing that motion. Don't step the foot down too quickly. <laughs> Last one. Oh, here we go. All the way back. <laughs> Last one. Okay, I think, I don't know if you agree, we've done enough of these. Because <laughs> boy, oh boy, that is Ooh, give me a little shimmy booty. How does that feel? <laughs> We're gonna move on now to the ankles because yes, remember what I said, often if you have knee issues, it's got nothing to do with your knee. It's actually the glutes and the ankles that need, or the pelvis and the ankles that need a bit of adaptation. We've taken some good care of our pelvis. Now let's move on to the ankles. So the first thing that I want you to do is mobilize the ankle range of motion. And I normally do this with a big dumbbell. I don't have one, so I've taken some ankle weights and strapped them together. And what I'm going to do is step my right foot forward in a low lunge. And I'm gonna have a look at my toes and I'm gonna check all the toes are really spread. I'm also gonna take a little look at my inner arch, okay? It's not collapsed, but slightly lifted. Depending on how much lift you have, that'll vary between people. But just there's a little energy, a little inner arch lifting action. And what you're gonna find is that when you get that inner arch lift, as the knee starts to travel over the toes, you might reach a little block, a point where your foot says no more. So you're going forward, I've got my weight helping to push my knee forward a little more. And then I pull back. And you're just gonna repeat that forward and back motion until you feel that block in the ankle and then pull it back. And please don't compare yourself to anyone else doing this. Our ankles are genetically different shapes, different sizes. We can go further for some and a little bit less for others. And there's advantages to both. Sometimes having a stiffer ankle gives you better jumping. And sometimes having a more mobile action in the ankle can be really great for our knees. So. There's no right or wrong, but we wanna maximize whatever we do have. And we're just seeing if can I take my knee over my toes without my ankle or my inner arch of my foot helping and compensating. Last one. I have totally lost count. <laughs> You're gonna to have to help me on the other side. Let's change it over. Oh, I was gassing. Let's um, spread out your tippy toes. Nice and far away from each other. Check the inner arch is lifted. Get your weight on your knee and start this forward and back motion. Not really going further every time if your body doesn't want to, but that's sort of the thought process. You're like, oh, that was easy. Let's try go a tiny bit more. Let's see if my ankle can tolerate exploring more range. 
And why I love using the weight is yes, it gives you more of a little push at the bottom, but it's also got to control that weight as you push away. So lots of benefits here. Yeah, and hopefully you're starting to see a difference in how much range you have. Something I didn't say earlier was maybe the bottom knee doesn't like being weight bared if it's hurting. You can also do this from a lunge. So you can also experience the same action in a lunge, but just take care. Maybe with the weight would be too aggressive. You can always get rid of the weight if you need to. Last couple of little pushes. Yeah, checking that inner arch, checking that it's not compensating by dropping. Checking your toes feel and look strong. Last couple to finish here. Yeah, okay, how are you feeling? Alrighty, remember you don't have to do anything that doesn't work for your body. The idea is that you feel good, but have a little feel, yeah? Excellent. So next thing we're going to look at is ankle circles. You can do this in sitting or in standing. We're going to lift one leg up and you're going to do nice big circles with the right ankle. Let's start with choosing one direction for about five reps. And then we're going to reverse it and go the other direction. And if there's little snap crackles or pops, you know it's working. <laughs> this is great. And I'm actually positioning myself in front of my weight, my ankle weights, and I'm sort of using them as a target to make these circles as big as I possibly can. Can I go all the way around the weight? That might be useful for some of you out there. Let's reverse the circle. So why am I making you do ankle circles if your knees are problematic? Well, remember the ankles need to be able to map appropriately all the different options of movement that are out there so that when they're out in the real world, then they know how to adapt to the surfaces that they're walking on. And then your knees don't have to take that extra load. And hopefully now, if you put your mind into the ankles, feeling quite warm and quite buzzy, which is really cool because what I want us to try next is actually wrapping the strap around the ball of the foot, like so. This works for some, not for others. See how you go. You can always get rid of the strap if it's not your mojo, but see if you can do five of those outward ankle circles using the strap to make it a bit harder. When you've done your fifth one, let's reverse it the other way. And actually it's shaky, which tells me that my brain hasn't got the best map of the circle. And so that's so important for pain-free joints, right? You want your brain to know exactly where it is at all times, no matter what motion it's trying out. And a shaky joint shows us that the brain doesn't have a clear map of those motions. Good, let's do one more circle on this leg this way and then we change it up. Let me know in the comments if any of you had little snap crackles or pops. Let me know in the comments if you had any shakiness in your joints. Remember this can get better with practice. You can smooth it out. One more. Ah, absolutely excellent. Now again, we don't have to use any um, resistance for this, but it could be interesting. We're gonna do something called an ankle tilt. So essentially what that means is, you're gonna wrap the strap around the ankle, uh, around the foot rather, and you're gonna see if you can roll your feet outwards against this resistance. You can see the knees might move a little bit. Minimize that and just focus on the ankle going against the resistance. Absolutely fabulous. Now, we've done one type of range. Let's see if we can do like, let me come backwards. Step one foot forwards at a slight step. So we're getting a little bit of a different angle of pull on the ankle. Those ankle abilities to roll away from a collapsed arch, essentially, is what we're practicing. And you'll see my knee wants to really get involved. See if you can isolate it to the foot. Last one. Okay, let's switcheroo. 
Slightly different angle of tension now that the strap is providing. And then we roll against it. Good, check that your knee is not moving. <laughs> Keep doing it. Last two and last one, amazing. Okay, and then we're gonna actually finish off with, again, it might not seem like it's totally related, but I've worked with so many people as a physio and with knees and hip and back issues, sometimes I give them this one thing to try and it works like magic. Afterwards, they're like, what did you do? I feel so much better. And it's called a toe pull. So essentially all you're gonna do is put the top of your foot down and you're gonna mobilize the top of your foot and you can either just stay in the middle or you can angle it to the side or angle it to the inside. I'm doing it on the hard floor. You might find that's really aggressive. Roll up a towel, grab a cushion, do it on a mattress, whatever's gonna feel comfortable for essentially all you're doing is putting the top of the foot down until you feel a little stretch and then you're just sort of like exploring that stretch in lots of different angles. Just kind of noticing, ooh, what's going on here? How does this feel? Then we're gonna change it over to the other side. And we have that slightly unusual sensation traveling across the top of the ankle which you're observing and maybe noticing changes with a little bit of attention. Maybe where it's a little bit stickier, you have a special angle that you turn to and you're like, whoa, that's really tight. You can mobilize into that angle for a little bit. Feel that it's gently starting to release with all this time and attention. And then the secret sauce, let me tell you this, is once you're done feeling your knees, same, better or worse, there's no right or wrong answer. What we're trying to do is figure out what works for your body. So let me know in the comments down below. Check, if you're feeling better, it would be great to hear from you. But similarly, if you need a bit more, I'll make another video for you. So please do let me know if that wasn't quite the right combination for you. We are gonna finish with this. We've done hips, we've done ankles. Let's finish off our knees and let's explore all movement possible. Please note that these are pain-free, okay? We wanna make sure that all the movements you're exploring are indeed pain-free. And we're doing this quite vanilla. We've got feet forward, hip distance apart. Let's spice things up a little bit, if that's okay with you and it feels good in your body. Try the same thing with feet turned out. Can we circle both ways? Ooh, does your inner arch collapse when you do this? Do the ankles feel different? One more. Now let's turn the feet inwards, okay? I know it looks a bit funny, but imagine if you're out and about and maybe your foot goes into a funny position suddenly and your knee bends in a weird way. We want your body to go, oh, I've been here before. This is not a problem. I've explored this in a controlled environment and it's absolutely safe. And we only do that through exposure, right? Gradual, systematic exposure. Two more. Last one, yeah baby. Okay, how is that feeling? Now we did forwards, out and in, but remember we can also do it with one foot forwards. So let's have one foot forward, explore right and left your circles. Hee, <laughs> interesting, huh? Oh, that back ankle is tight. And then let's have a go at the exact same thing, but let's try it with feet outwards. Yeah, a little bit strange. You be forgiven for, th for thinking this is weird. And then last two of these weird outward foot ones. Let's try same thing now with feet inwards. Really strange. How does that feel? How is it different? Oh, I'm really learning a lot about my back ankle. It's tight. Three more, two more, and one. Fabulous. Let's just do the other foot in front. Last three, feet are forward. Now, what does this remind you of? Yeah, this is your walking, right? Are your knees able to tolerate a step forwards with the ankles bending in these strange positions? Think stairs as well, feet out. 
Are your feet always facing forwards? Probably not. No, they turn around when you change direction. Some of us naturally walk with our feet out or slightly in. We want to be able to tell the brain all of these different positions are safe. Three more. Two more. Ooh, and one. Ah, shaky business. Turn your toes inwards. This is the last one and then you are free to go. Make sure you're just staying in their pain-free range, exploring your body. Three more. Two more. And one. And then the secret sauce is always to take a little moment to scan your body, do a couple of little exploration movements, check how does this feel. Please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It helps to grow the channel and it helps us get better videos out to you. Until next time, my beautiful friend, I'll see you.